Today I'll tell you about the history of Norman Sicily and how its legacy affects modern day Sicily. Sicily began as a Muslim emirate. While Reggio was controlled by the Byzantines, they ruled southern mainland Italy. Supported by Constantinople, now Istanbul, the Byzantines defended repeated Saracen attacks from the island of Sicily and as well North Africa. The Normans, who originated from France, played the Lombards and the Byzantines against each other, as well as a very political and interventionist pope in the Vatican. In 1038, the Byzantines attacked Sicily, supported by the Normans. Sicily at this time was ruled by a group of feuding regional emirs. Messina and Syracuse soon fell, and after controlling eastern Sicily, internal squabbles between the invading Byzantines and Normans lost the momentum and the Arabs gained control over Sicily again by 1040. To learn more about La Bella Sicilia, consider subscribing. Robert Giscard, Duke of Apulia, was appointed Duke of Sicily in 1059 by Pope Nicholas II, who entreated him to take back the Muslim island of Sicily. Lombard and Byzantine lords again hired Norman mercenaries and conquered Sicily. Roger occupied Messina in 1061 and won a key battle against the Muslims at Misul Mary near Bagaria in 1068. Roger assisted a Sicilian emir named Ibn al-Hawaz to defeat the others and in return he would gain control of eastern Sicily. The plan proceeded. The Normans took Enna, but in trying to take the, the stronghold of Enna, which belonged to Ibn al-Hawaz, they also tried to arrest him, but the emir cunningly evaded capture. Initially, the Normans were not strong enough to take Palermo, but in 1071, a reinforced invasion force resumed a siege of the city. The Normans routed a Saracen navy sent from Africa, sent to dislodge them. Palermo eventually surrendered to Robert Giscard in a bloodless takeover, and unusually there were no reprisals and no looting. This was a catastrophic loss, as Palermo was a premier Arabic city and a port. The mopping up of the final strongholds, Enna, Trapani and Syracuse, continued for some time. But the Muslim island of Sicily had been taken, Robert's finest achievement. Robert Giscard was always short in military forces, so he had to instead use diplomacy when dealing with Saracens. There was taxation and conscription, but nothing out of the ordinary. They respected the status quo. Mosques remained, and Arabic remained an official language, along with Latin, Greek and Norman French. Many of the Saracens who initially fled Sicily soon returned to live in a multiracial, multilingual island. Enna fell in 1087, as did Nartot in 1091. Roger I became king of Sicily and inherited new territory in southern Italy. Palermo became the capital of Sicily in 1112, ruled by Roger II. The Normans introduced a central government under a common law. Roger II grew up as a Sicilian in the flourishing city of Palermo. His mother, Adelaide, married Baldwin, king of Jerusalem. Baldwin misused her dowry to pay off his own debts. Having used her money, Baldwin renounced his marriage to Adelaide, who died in Sicily. Roger did come to power at the age of 16 and made a point of increasing his wealth and his power as others left to join the Crusades. In 1130, Roger agreed loyalty to the Pope, including monies given, and was crowned King of Sicily, Calabria, Apulia and Capua. The Kingdom of Sicily was prosperous, politically powerful, one of the wealthiest kingdoms 
in Europe, which was described by an Arab geographer of the time as the greatest and the finest metropolis in the world. His name was Al Idrisi. Roger held a keen interest in science, astronomy and astrology. Roger was increasing his power. His fleet became the dominant maritime power in the Mediterranean, dispensing with the Byzantine forces. In 1136, the rivalry between the anti-pope Anacletus triggered Pope Innocent II to unite Lothar III, Holy Roman Emperor, and the Byzantine Emperor John II Comnenus to attack Sicily. Roger initially tried to negotiate with the Emperor, but the Pope would not allow this. He demanded Apulia as a papal property. Pope Innocent excommunicated Roger II in 1139. Roger's son, Roger III, Duke of Apulia, ambushed the papal troops and abducted the Pope at one point. After this, Pope Innocent reluctantly acknowledged the rule of Roger II. Roger continued to defend his territory against a number of foreign invaders. William I of Sicily succeeded Roger II and was known as William the Bad. Depending on your point of view, he was a poor leader who certainly fell out with the regional barons in Sicily. A riot in Palermo ensued in 1155 and the Muslims suffered unusually harsh discrimination under his reign. William II came of age in 1172 and allowed Muslims to live peaceably at a time when Christianity generally was becoming very intolerant of other religions. His great act was to build the monastery at Monreale. William II could almost do no wrong. However, his downfall was that he had no male heir and his aunt, Constance, was named his sole heir. In 1184, she was married to Henry, and this husband would become the future Henry VI, Holy Roman Emperor. There was a general resistance in Sicily to be ruled by Henry as a German. Tancred of Lecce seized Sicily. Empress Constance was abducted and only later released on the intervention of the Pope. Tancred died and his son, William III of Sicily, was deposed. Let's now talk a little about the culture and the legacy of Sicily. Sicily was indeed a joining of European, Christian, Byzantine, Greek and Arabic cultures. This is the Byzantine Arab Norman culture that Sicily is now famous for. Greek Arabic and Latin were used in Sicily during this time, but French was used in the Norman court. The incoming migration would also change the mix of the language used. The immigration would bring greater amounts of Latin spoken in Sicily. There was lots of inward immigration from across Europe and this increased the level of Roman Catholicism on the island. So let's talk about some of the key sites in Sicily which reflect this period. The Palatine Chapel in Palazzo dei Normanni in Palermo is a royal chapel which mixes Byzantine, Norman and Arabic architecture which was typical of the style of 12th century Sicily. The castle at Carcamo is one of the largest and best surviving Norman castles in Sicily. Castello di Lombardia, Enna, was rebuilt by the Normans in the 10th century. The castle of Venus in Erice was also built by the Normans. Cefalù Cathedral is a famous example of Arab Norman architecture. 
Monreal Cathedral was one of the greatest legacies of William II. 